I'm a military audiologist. I have a clinical job where I take care of patients who refer to me through the hearing screening program. But I'm also a preventive medicine officer who deals primarily with education. I love getting up every morning and coming into work. This is the best job in the world. Uh, I could not ask for a better job to have very autonomous. This is the next best thing to have in your own private practice. I'm here to take care of the soldier. Uh, I want to make sure that our soldiers are capable and ready to be able to fight the fight. If there's something I can do to make them more lethal, more effective, that's my function. And I'm here to be a servant, to help. We do a tremendous amount of hearing aid care here. And I enjoy hearing aids, but if I could keep soldiers from having to wear hearing aids, that would be even more wonderful. In my role, I work on like the trucks and the Humvees and things, so with my hearing, I, I really need to hear because half the time rules change, we get new, new equipment almost every week, so if we don't know what we're working on or if we can't hear what we're working on, it can damage us, death, it can damage the equipment for someone else that's working on it, so my role is really making sure that we're safe and the people that are gonna ride in the vehicles are safe. Education is the key. Again, if I do not educate our soldiers why we're doing it, that they understand the importance and that they need to wear their hearing protection properly, it's all for naught. If I had to choose tomorrow between testing soldiers' hearing annually and education, well, we would put doing the hearing testing. We do the hearing testing because it's a measurable metric. Okay, we can see that. And plus, it is tied into medical readiness. But education, education is the key. If we do not educate, we have set ourselves up for failure. Here, when I'm working, I don't wear equipment, but I'm getting to the point where I do need to start wearing it because it's very loud where we work. So I do actually need to work on protecting myself. The two number one concerns for the VA system at this point is not PTSD and TBI. It is tinnitus, which is a symptom that very much related to hearing loss. And those are the two main things that the VA is working with right now for our veterans. Um, our big thing is I am a preventive medicine officer. So my job is to prevent, not to rehabilitate. Although we spend a significant amount of time working with hearing aids with our soldiers. But for prevention, our primary goal is education. I can watch your hearing get worse every year. So the requirement, and it's a measurable metric, is an annual hearing test. We do an annual hearing test on the soldier. If it does not change, then they're good to go. If it changes, then this is why they come in to see me. If I can prevent that, that's what I want to do. And the strongest way for us to do that is through education. We have the basic standard hearing protection. You can either look at the little foamies that we use up to something a lot more sophisticated that will provide not only hearing protection but enhance your hearing. So we have, we have technology out there to not only prevent hearing loss but also to enhance your hearing in a tactical environment. And this gets back to a cost factor and education. We uh, fielded uh, new types of hearing technology to each brigade here just about two years ago. Each of these units cost approximately $2,000. And it takes buy-in because a lot of times when you're dealing with technology, um, a lot of older people don't want to buy into technology because it's a change. So I really try to target a lot of the younger infantry soldiers whenever they come through to demonstrate the technology to them and try to get them to uh, embrace it. If I had to choose between having normal hearing and wearing these two hearing aids, well, of course, I would definitely choose the normal hearing. It's so important because when we're given directions, if we can't hear, anything can go wrong. We can put the wrong part on. We can't hear anybody when they need help. It's, it's pretty much a big deal where I work at. So I always stress to the importance of the soldiers of the educational process and the training involved until it's rote memorization. Once you have it ingrained into your brain, you do not think about it. The other thing is one size does not fit all. I usually ask soldiers what size of boot do they wear. So if they wear a size nine boot, that's great. 
So how about if we go to CIF tomorrow, everybody gets issued new boots, and we'll issue size nine boot. You're in good shape. But what about the guy who wears a 10 and a half? What about the person who wears a seven? You cannot just hand this stuff out to soldiers and expect it to fit properly. This is why they have different sizes. And again, it is a continual education process. Right? We do training for soldiers at the unit level. They come to my training class and they take this information back to the unit. And they are expected to be the hearing program officer. And one of their duties is to make sure that every soldier gets an annual educational brief. All they have to do is fill out an application form and show up to my class. And we have these classes every other week over at the Kennard Center. Feel good is taking care of patients here, taking care of the soldiers, uh, meeting their needs. Their needs can be met by just completing the hearing evaluation. Their needs can be met by covering the types of hearing protection they should be using. Their needs can be met by seeing their faces light up whenever I fit them with hearing aids for the first time and they have been struggling to be able to communicate effectively. So it's a very, very rewarding, very rewarding job. Mm -hmm.